Hey, what's going on, everybody? Como estamos, mi gente? This is Gabriel Arango. You are tuned into the Lounge Network. Vamos allá. Ay, 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 ay. Hey guys, this is Carlos Phoenix with the Indie Lounge, and we have a special guest today on the Lounge Network. It's Gabriel Orengo, and he is a Latin pop, R&B, all sorts of music kind of star. He's been doing some singles out there with R in English. They're in Spanish, and I've been following him for a little bit of time as after I got introduced by his manager Ian Burke. Uh, but I, you know, finally I just said, you know, I got to talk to this guy. I want to see who what he's about and follow him and. So we have him here as a special guest. How's it going? Well, let me, uh, we're going to pass Mike, and um, well, go, here you go. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you for having me here. Um, you know, it's a privilege to be here on the network, and uh, yeah, you know, thanks for having me. Well, uh, yeah, you know, um, as you guys know now, my name is Gabriel Arango, and, you know, I've been start. I started when I was five years old, uh, you know, just um, playing piano. My parents put me in piano lessons and singing. And, you know, progressively they put me, you know, in, in the church choir and stuff like that. And I really, I fell in love with music at an early age. And it was something that, you know, it was kind of like my outlet. You know, music was something that I loved to do while everybody was outside playing and stuff like that. I just gravitated more towards music. So, you know, and now we're here now, you know, promoting my single, I, I, I. You know, for all you guys out there watching, please go on YouTube. YouTube, check out III and on iTunes as well. All right, so looking at your background, I noticed you're Puerto Rican and Ecuadorian. Yeah. So now, did that in, in Spanish music, that sometimes can be a, a odd mix, only because yeah. there's certain types of music that they like in Puerto Rico, and then you got certain types of music you like. Now, at home, how did that work out for you? And how did that influence you, if anything? Um, surprisingly, it wasn't as confusing as a lot of people might think. You know, my parents... You know, they love each other, you know, so it was one of those things where they learned to communicate, thankfully, before they had me and my two brothers. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely a culture clash because Puerto Ricans, you know, how everybody has their stereotypes. Puerto Ricans are known to be very caliente, and very, you know, crazy. And Ecuadorians are, can be, you know, I mean, there's definitely different sorts, but Ecuadorians, for the main part, are very passive. And that's pretty much how my home was. My dad was, you know, the very uh, outgoing, crazy one, and my mom was the more passive. And, you know, so it was definitely a, a, a good balance. And, you know, culturally also it exposed me to a lot more. You know, I would go to Ecuador and I would learn their culture and their type of music. And then I would go to Puerto Rico and also learn their culture and, and you know, what it is, their food, their music and everything. And it was it's it's just beautiful how I can mix those two in my music. And I think. Uh, basically, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a, a different fusion of Latin sounds together with the contemporary music that I listen to in America. You know, I was born and raised in New Jersey. And so, you know, I grew up listening to Usher, you know, Music Soul Child, you know, even like Chris Brown and stuff like that. So that's basically what I'm trying to do musically is create that fusion, that balance between, you know, the Caribbean, the South American, Central America, and what we listen to now as, as you know, youth. So um, now that we're talking about the Latin, um, I've been interviewing a few Latin artists and stuff, and, uh, and, and that's certainly that, a focus that has come on to me. As a Latino, uh, a lot of people have been saying, Carlos, you should cover more Latin stuff. Entering in the American market as a La as a Latino, yeah. have, have you felt that that's going to be a little bit more uh, a bigger hump to to climb, or do you feel that actually adds to your spice and and may open up the markets to you a little bit easier? Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, surprisingly, it's been an amazing journey. You know, people pretty much accept me for who I am. And I think because I come in telling everybody, listen, I'm a Latin artist, you know, 
it's it's so much more easily accepted when I am in the American market because they're like, oh, okay, this is this is who he is. You know, he's being who he is. He comes from this background and and musically it's different. So I think it kind of I kind of open up my own lane in the sense where you know I'm kind of first generation um, Latin American and you know I have you know kind of my own people that I'm speaking to and I'm relating to you know kids who kind of grew up the same way that I did you know so and also I mean still even in Latin America where they're listening to my music and they're like oh okay you know this is this American kid kind of coming in and you know changing it up and kind of speaking for us as well so it's it's definitely a, a well accepted thing that I'm doing now um in your home, you said you accepted, you got into music uh, at an early age, you used to go to church and sing in church. Yeah. At what point did you say, or, you know, one, I want to find out who your influences are, but at what point did you say, I think I want to do this, like, for real? Yeah. You know, one thing is singing in the shower, another thing is singing in the kitchen with mom or whatever, or at the parties when everybody's, yo, yo, sing this and this. Yeah. At what point did you say, all right, this is a career choice? Yeah. Uh, it was very early on. I would have to say like around 14 years old when I was kind of contemplating, okay, what am I going to do? I've, I've always been kind of like a step ahead. So when I was like 14, 15, I'm like, all right, what am I going to do when I'm out of high school? And, you know, I have a career, I'm going to have a career and I kind of want to, you know, I'm very, I was always very ambitious too. And like, I want to have a family and I want, you know, one day I want to be able to financially be stable and all of that so yeah i felt like music to me was my go-to it was what i've always known and what i've loved and, and when i was around 14 is when i started like okay i'm gonna i want to take up production i started writing my own music and kind of developing that skill as well so yeah around that age very early on i was like this is what i want to do you got into production you went to school in florida um to learn how to engineer and things of that nature and uh, then you're also doing songwriting. You also kind of introduced yourself as a different name artist. Right. Um, and you did some music there. I, I heard a lot of that stuff. Um, where did you, are you, I mean, I guess you're mixing it all up within yourself. You want to be able to knock out everything. You, you're doing piano, you do drums, yeah. you do engineering, you do the, right, the songwriting. Yeah. And now you're out there as your own artist, yeah. you know, well, you met Ian, so kind of give me that picture of how all that kind of came to be. Yeah. Um, well, kind of when I was deciding, okay, this is what I wanted to do, I ended up going to uh, Full Sail University in Orlando and started taking up engineering and wanting to learn the, the behind the scenes, kind of like the technical side, you know, what, it, what does each of these buttons do on the console, you know, how does the microphone work and why does it work the way it does, and I was just very curious as to, okay, I want, if I'm going to get into this world, I want to be able to know every facet of, of what you know what goes on and so i started doing things there and that's when i started also doing youtube videos as radical you know so that was kind of my alias as well and you know it was one of those things where i was mainly more towards i was gearing towards the urban market and you know i would listen to drake and chris brown and i'm like this is really cool this is what i love to listen to and so i immediately started doing covers and i would take the songs that were out on the radio and you know people started just sharing them and sharing them and you know it, it became a blessing to me because it wasn't something that i wanted to do off top you know i had a lot of friends that were like man you, you need to go out there and just put your stuff on youtube Darling, I will be loving you till we're 70. Touch of a hand. Well, me, I fall in love with you every single day, and I just wanna tell you I am. So, honey, now take me into your loving arms. Kiss me under the light of a down. 
YouTube. And surprisingly, it just, people just, it was like a snowball effect. I would put it out and people would just start sharing it and sharing it. And so, yeah, that's kind of how Radical came to be, you know, started doing covers and started getting out there. I'll do little open mics as well in Orlando. And how I came to Atlanta after Orlando, I had some people out here that were like, you know, we want to see if we can work with you. And Atlanta kind of was becoming a hub for songwriters and producers in the pop market, you know, so urban music started becoming pop. And so I was like, you know, why not go out there and see see what what happens? And um, Atlanta essentially became like another school for me. You know, it was one of those things where I just threw myself out there. You know, I had nobody to come to, you know, except for the, you know, few few other songwriters and producers that I knew. But, you know, I was out here on my own and I feel like this is where I learned, okay, the business. This is this is the reality of it is it's not as easy as, you know, they they like to paint it, yeah. you know, in the media. So, um and here's where I met Ian Burke. You know, he called me out for a showcase that uh, a, a music label out in Los Angeles was having. And, you know, that's how we connected and, and we started building. And, you know, he definitely captured the vision of what I was trying to do. You know, and that's when I made the transition from Radical to Gabriel Lorengo, um, which in turn to me was the more authentic me. You know, I wanted to incorporate the Latin music. I wanted to incorporate everything that I am and my story and my music. So it was just the authentic, the authenticity that I was like, you know, I'm gonna just take my name and and run with that now. So yeah, that's and you know that's how me and Ian started working and building, and you know he he brought me to this situation as well out in Los Angeles, which is a music label, an independent music label called All That Is Entertainment, and yeah, they decided to work with me and and sign me, and here we are today. Awesome. Yeah. Easy to say, like in one paragraph, right? Right, right? But you know all that work that you have to do to get there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so now you're releasing a single. Um, I mean, do you have an album yet, or is it more like one piece at a time? Yeah, uh, we have created the album. You know, it's it's. I mean, it's still not 100 percent, but the main the main songs that we want on the album is it's definitely there. And um, you know we're releasing I I I, which is my first single. We we created the video, uh, which is very fun, by the way. Uh, Riveting Entertainment shot shot the video. Yeah, so we're releasing singles by you know kind of single by single, trying to create the buzz, trying to let people understand who I am, pretty much song by song. So you know right now we have I I I. We haven't chosen the next single yet, but it's definitely the follow up to I, I, I and it's, it's definitely defining who I am as an artist song by song you know until eventually we're looking about next year to release the album and have something official for everybody to listen to now tell us about I, I, I. Um, I, I, I is, is one of those records it, it was a fun song I created it with um, super producer Brian Michael Cox which I had the privilege to get in the studio with him and you know the concept of I, I, I is, is you know I, I, I is kind of one of those Latin terms that you know if your mother stubs her toe in the kitchen she's like I, 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 you know if you're you know you didn't clean your room I, 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 mijo, like what's wrong with you you gotta clean your room you know so I kind of flipped it and used it more on a flirtatious level where you know it's kind of me flirting with this girl trying to get at her and she's just like hi yeah yeah you know what again another one you know and me trying to conquer her you know make her my girl so you know when people go out there and watch the video that's on youtube you know you guys will definitely see that and it's you know it's just all fun it's me trying to get at her and she playing around and you know one of those oh, records so let's put on the video this is i i i i One day I saw her at Cabanas She looked so good I had to holler The type of girl who cooking clean for ya That body turned me to a conquiste Me dijo, papi, como te gusta Yo dije, a mi me puedes dominar Si me da lo que yo ando buscando Yo te dejo sonriendo al final She said, ay, 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 ay
kissing that body, your skin got that glow. Sipping on colliders down in Mexico. She said, ay, 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 ay. She said, ay, 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 ay. Hey, girl, you're so caliente, like a volcano. I'll be your lover, tu caribeño. You make my heart stop, toma lo que tengo. You can be my doctor, yo tu caribeño. Tu caribeño, tu caribeño. Ay, mami, espérame que ve. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, she was a, a pretty cute woman. Yes. Um, and uh, now you, you did do the song both in English and in Spanish. And now is the whole album done that way, or is it was it just kind of like, well, here I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I can do it in both. Yeah. It, it was more so. Yes, it was more so. The whole album is not um, going to be translated in English and Spanish. It's, it, a lot of the songs will be in Spanglish. So kind of me throwing in some English and Spanish, but uh, we did for this song. It was more so, yeah, for, uh, for also for radio purposes. So if we're gonna go towards the Latin market, we, they can have a version, and then if it's just for the English market, they'll have you know their version as well. So yeah, it was it was mainly for those purposes, and I felt like it was it it became organic as well. Even when I was writing it. I was like, man, I would love to do a a, a Spanish version, on, a, a Spanish verse on the second verse, and you know, so it kind of just built, it just kind of creatively came out that way as well. Cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, you're gonna release your album. You're gonna do extremely well, and what's gonna be amazing is uh, seeing how it grows in both the Latin market yeah. and in the American market. Um, we want everybody to be able to follow you, so I want you to tell us, you know, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, yeah. you know, and all that type of stuff. And also, you know, what kind of performances, where you're going to be, uh, and, and basically what's going to be happening next. Yeah, for sure. So everybody, please go check out my website, which is GabrielArengo.com. But if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's Music by Gabriel. On Instagram, it's Gabriel Arengo Music. Uh, Facebook is Facebook.com slash Music by Gabriel. You know, please follow me. I'll follow you guys back. You know, if you guys want to comment on anything I'll, I'll hit you guys right back and um yeah so yeah the album wait for it please go on itunes type in gabriel arango I, I, I please support please download the song and um yeah that's that's right now that's this is what we're pushing um you know what's next is we just we just finished a um, a press tour in miami and we were able to push the song and speak to different you know media outlets you know tv stations and radio uh radio stations and next is just you know we're going to start doing some shows we're going to start getting out there and letting people hear the song touching the people and being able uh to show myself to them and you know it's just continuing on continuing on awesome. yeah awesome. well much luck to you thank you so much for being on the lounge network and on the indie lounge um and uh, thank you uh, for Ian 
for allowing me to, to be able to sit down and have a chat with you. Yeah. And uh, we're going to stay uh, basically plugging him on our Facebook. We're going to be plugging him everywhere that I can. Um, and we're going to be following him all the way through until the release of the album. And we'll show you music videos and all, basically everything he's got. So uh, hopefully you'll uh, you know come back on the show. And uh, hopefully you guys will fall in love with his music. Thank you very much. Keep watching. La conocí dentro la disco Fue en California, en San Francisco Con esos ojos yo me enamoré Vine la vida y después la conquisté Me dijo, papi, ¿cómo te gusta? Yo dije, a mí me puedes dominar Si me da lo que yo ando buscando Yo te dejo solo